What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a pretty cool day because we're tearing down the Chevelle engine for two reasons. One, because after years and years of a hard, hard abuse, one of the cylinder heads threw the towel in and cracked. Um, it cracked in a spot where it's very, very hard to see, but it didn't affect the performance of how the car ran. So, last year, at the end of the year, we took the Chevelle out to Las Vegas for Streetcar Super Nationals with a cracked cylinder head and no water in the block, no coolant, no nothing, and it ran the fastest it's ever ran. Let's go ahead and tear into this thing, have some fun, and uh, maybe you guys will learn something today. So, get comfortable and let's do it. So first off, we drain all the fluids out of it. Uh, always take into account what the oil looks like, what it smells like, uh, if there's any metal in there, what types of metal are in the oil. Luckily, uh, the engine oil looked nice and clean out of this motor. There was a little bit of fuel in there and you could smell that, um, but um, I ran the motor pretty rich uh, because there wasn't any coolant in it and typically when you run a motor richer, it keeps it a little bit cooler. So now that we're back up in the top end of the motor, time to take all the lash out of the valves and start loosening up all the rocker arms off their stands. Before the motor came out of the car, I had already checked valve lash on all the valves and everything checked out beautifully. Um, I've honestly never had a single valve train issue with this engine, which is really nice. Uh, I turned the motor about 8,400 RPMs uh, out in Vegas the last time this motor was in the car, which is the hardest it's ever been turned. And to uh, you know, see everything coming out looking beautiful is really nice. But as we pull each rocker assembly off, uh, I inspect every single one, check the roller tips, make sure everything's rolling nice and smooth, and uh, you know, see if there's any signs of wear anywhere on the tip, and check on the tip of the valve as well. So now that all of the rocker arms and push rods are off the cylinder heads, it's time to start breaking the head studs loose. Uh, this engine is a six bolt deal, there's 48 head studs, uh, so it takes a little bit of time to do this, but as I'm breaking everything loose, I'm really feeling how tight the studs are and how they're they're breaking away, um, you know, just to make sure that everything is consistent. Threads aren't galling up on the studs. Nothing kind of came loose because these were new copper head gaskets. Uh, I did do the retorque cycle on them, so everything did feel really good. Um, and now we're just gonna zip them off the rest of the way with the impact. Now these are the fun ones. The little baby studs that are in the valley of the engine that are upside down. Uh, kind of a nightmare to do in all these LSX engines, but got those off. Now the cylinder head can slide up and off and don't drop a head stud on the floor like I just did there. But now that we got the head off, we're gonna inspect every chamber, take a second, check everything out, inspect the head gasket, and then pop it off. Um, every single layer that comes off gets inspected, both sides, up and down, front to back, uh, just to see if there's any signs of wear and tear or abuse. And uh, now that we got one cylinder head off, we can start checking out the pistons and looking at the cylinders and, and all the tops of the pistons. Next up, we go into the valley and start popping all the lifters up and out. And again, dump all the oil out, check how all the rollers roll on the axles of the lifters. Uh, this is a very important thing here. Um, this, you know, if your engine's going into valve float, if the valve train's beating itself up, lifters are a failure point. But luckily here, these Crower lifters have been very, very good to me for years and years. And uh, everything checks out nice and uh, pretty. So we're gonna move on to the other cylinder head, break the uh, valley head studs loose and continue on. Same process as the other side. So now that the second cylinder head is up and off the motor, time to do the same thing, inspect the chambers, valves, pistons, head gaskets, all that stuff like that. 
Um, I, I typically like to check out all the parts dirty, meaning uh, I don't wipe everything off as I pull it off because uh, I want to see if oil is getting to places where it needs to go and if it's getting to places where it shouldn't be, I want to know that as well. Um, that will tell you several signs of you know if certain things are going on. So roll the motor around, feel how the engine's spinning around, making sure it's still got resistance, if it's still uh, nice and smooth, uh, and if it's hanging up on anything. So all was good here, and uh, now that we got the motor upside down, we're gonna zip the oil pan off of it and get ready to take the oil pump pickup tube off. Now before we put our hands on anything here, we're gonna inspect all the parts, making sure uh, everything was where we uh, intended it to be, nothing's moved around, and uh, everything looked good. It's very, very important on all these LS engines with factory pickup tubes and oil pumps, check out the O-ring on the pickup tube. Uh, oftentimes these things get pinched, they, they get cut, um, little funky things happen to them, so they will cause low oil pressure. This one seems to be in good shape, so we're gonna keep moving on and start getting the rods out of the engine, rods and pistons. So we break them loose by hand and then thread them out a few turns with the impact and get a rubber mallet and give them a couple little gentle taps to get the rod cap separated from the rod itself. Get the rest of the, uh, the, the bolt out, pull it out and check out how the rod bearing looks. And that looks brand spanking new, as it should. Uh, motor doesn't have very much runtime on it. It does have a lot of hard runtime on it, but um, it's good to see that these bearings all ended up looking like brand new. You could basically put them in the box and send them back and they wouldn't even know it. So um, always a good sign there. That means clearances were happy. Uh, we weren't really beaten up with it too bad on the tune-up. Um, typically, if a motor is really detonating itself hard, you'll see it in the rod bearings. Uh, so everything looked really, really good there and uh, we'll uh, zip all these out and inspect the rest of them. So now that all the rods and pistons are out, time to grab the slide hammer and tap out the center main cap of this engine. Um, this is an important one. It's where the thrust bearing is, and that's what basically keeps the crankshaft from going too far forward or backwards inside the engine. Um, this one looked really good. Uh, little signs of wear, nothing scary, but um, we could basically put this back in the motor and continue running it. Uh, this slide hammer is a really, really nice tool to have. Um, these main caps get stuck in the block pretty good and just a few taps and these things are, are out in just a second. All right guys, well, there's most of the teardown for the LSX out of the Chevelle. Um, this is pretty much as far as I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna pull the other couple caps off, check the bearings, make sure they're okay. I'm not gonna worry about taking the camshaft out because it's all fresh in there, so um, we're just gonna assume that it's good. But anyways, um, gonna go ahead and uh, get a couple parts ordered up for this thing. The new cylinder heads are here, so we're gonna go ahead and get those prepped, ready to go, and uh, get this engine back in the car so we are back racing ASAP. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, do all those fun things, and we'll see you guys on the next one.